In today's video, we are going to be exploring the best manga shop that I have ever been to, hands down. So here we are at Matt's Cards and Comics. Now, they actually were super nice here. They gave me permission to film. I asked the owner, he said, yeah, go ahead. The only thing was they were actually doing a food drive the exact same day. So if there is a little bit of mess with all the food, they were doing it for a great cause. Now, the first manga that caught my eye was Akka. It looked like an interesting story about like this really solid agent in this agency. And it said there was something about a coup that was being planned behind his back. So I was actually really interested in that story. Even looking here, they had some old school Dragon Ball Z manga as well. It was just filled to the brim as you guys will see with old manga, new manga, and everything in between. This place had literally everything. I was here for probably three hours just browsing around, trying to make sure that I didn't miss anything that I really wanted. And I'm sure that I did. So if you guys see anything that absolutely like a must pick up, something that you think I would like, let me know because I would really love to go back there. The Sending Stories is one that I thought was very interesting as well. As you can see here, they had a little shelf full of Japanese candy. They also had some figures as well. And you'll see later on, they had some Dragon Ball Z figures. They just had everything here. Like I called a lot of local card and comic shops and they always told me that they barely had any manga. And for some reason, this one flew off my radar. So I decided to stop in and oh my gosh, this place was literally like bigger than a Barnes and Noble. Just strap in, strap in and enjoy the ride is all I can say today. And I do want to give a big shout out to the owner as well. He was very nice. I was so incredible nervous to ask if I could film here. There were so many people there that day. My anxiety was through the roof, but he thankfully let me film the store. So if you're ever in the area, definitely stop by and check it out because you won't be disappointed. They had a lot of Inyasha mangas and like spin-offs. They even had the Viz Big that I just saw they had number two of and I actually needed that. So I'm a little bit disappointed that I didn't notice that the first time around. Gunsmith Cats looked really cool. It was sealed up as well. Some of the manga, the older manga, wasn't in the best condition, but some of it was in really good condition, so it was kind of just like pick and choose. I mean, you can't really expect all older manga to be in perfect condition. Living Room Matsunaga-san. I still haven't started the series because it's pretty long. I only have the first two volumes so far, but I definitely want to collect more of those. My senpai is annoying. They had all of the volumes I think that are out so far, one through seven. I still need to collect two and on. Now I tried my best to film like all of the manga in the store, but like I said, they were running a food drive and some of them were really high up, but like I was not tall enough to see them. So yeah, I'm sorry if I didn't like get the best shots of all the manga, but I promise you I tried my hardest. They even had singles of Ranma one half, which is really cool to me that they had like singles instead of the Omnibus or the Viz Big versions of these because those are, I'm imagining, very, very old. I'm gonna try not to talk like an insane amount in this video and just let you guys enjoy as well because there's just so much to look at. Pluto, unfortunately no volume one. I really want to start collecting that series though. Saturn Apartments, I really like the aesthetic of this manga and it seemed like a cool sci-fi adventure as well. The 
They even had a Street Fighter manga, which I have never ever seen. They didn't even know that they made Street Fighter manga, but I thought that was interesting. Sunshine Sketch seemed like a nice artsy slice of life story and I've really been like into the more creative type mangas that are about either like manga creation or just arts in general. Tesoro. Now this manga was just like really simple but also beautiful at the same time and I loved the color of the panels. They weren't just black and white, they had like a brownish tint to them which I thought was interesting. Singles of Vagabond, which I have never seen. Unfortunately, no volume one. I definitely would have picked it up though. Although I feel like it might be hard to collect. 20th Century Boys. This spine reminded me of Happy Conoco's Killer Life, but this story was not about that. It definitely would be cool to at least add to the collection just because of how beautiful the spines were. Witches was one that I was back and forth on. It was the complete collection and it was something that I wanted to get just because I don't really have anything in the realm of that genre so I might keep an eye out for that. seem like an interesting romance story. Baby and Me looked like an old school story about a baby and the main character as you might have guessed. Now, Bakuman, I like literally cannot get my hands on volume one of this. I always end up seeing volume two and on. And if I could just get volume one, I would be so happy because I really want to read that story so bad. Battle Rabbits. I really like the cover and the art style. Blazing Barrels. I like the name of the manga first off. The spines are beautiful and so was the artwork. It seemed like a could be a cool shonen. They did have like a lot of full sets as well, which was so incredibly tough to just not pick up like so much here. I spent more than I wanted to in the first place, but I probably could have emptied my bank account. <laughs> If you can see there, they had a manga called The Gone, which I thought was like maybe some weird spin-off of Hunter x Hunter that I never heard of, but I think it was about like a dinosaur or something. <laughs> this manga really caught my eye and I wanted to pick it up because I love the art style on it, but I could not tell what it was about, <laughs> so I didn't pick it up. It's definitely a manga that I'm going to add to my list. How to Train Your Devil. Imperfect Hero, I just like the title because if it's about like an imperfect hero, I think that's great. Agro Days I noticed that they had, but no volume two. I wish. Ah, 
island. I really like the artwork. There's like a lot of old school artwork in this shop that really caught my eye that day. As you can see here, a lot of Inyasha singles. And they even had an Animanga, which was pretty cool. They had a ton of Inyasha stuff. So if you're an Inyasha fan, like this is the shop for you. <laughs> All of Komomo Confissieri. Ton of box sets as you can see as well. They had Fairy Tale, Attack on Titan. Kitchen Princess kind of reminded me of like a Komomo Confissieri style. So I definitely thought about picking that one up. Even had like DVD box sets as you can see right there. <laughs> Fully sealed Kimagode. I thought these were cool. I don't know if they're manga or just like reenactments of the movie. They had a lot of Studio Ghibli full color movie mangas, I guess. I've actually never seen them, so correct me if I'm wrong, which I probably am, but they had Kiki's Delivery Service. I'm pretty sure they had some other ones as well, which I thought was very cool to see since I haven't seen any of those in person. Majasuki. Moving along, it's not even close to being done. <laughs> this shop was huge. It was absolutely enormous. Mega Tokyo, they had Omnibus 1 and 2. I almost picked it up, but I didn't. There was just, I couldn't make up my mind if I'm being quite honest with you guys today. Like, as you can see, it's just an overwhelming amount of options. And it's also so much manga that I'm not used to seeing. Like if I go to a Barnes and Noble or like Newberry Comics, usually it's like pretty much a lot of similar manga, but here was just like hundreds of manga out of the realm that I have seen. So I, like I said, I was there for hours on end. I could not make up my mind on what to pick up. They even had some manwas, model. Moteki, this was an absolutely gorgeous cover and the artwork was beautiful as well. Mushoku Tensei, it's a fan favorite for sure. A lot of Naruto, of course, of course, of course. Yeah, so like I was saying with the Studio Ghibli, I also had My Neighbor Totoro. Now, My Neighbor Seki, this was a story that really interested me. It seemed like a nice slice of life story about the main character and his neighbor. And it was a longer series, but it came out like semi recently. So I figured I'd probably be able to collect it without too much trouble. For some reason, all the mangas with the word wish in the title were catching my eye. I don't know why. We never learn. I've heard a lot of you recommend this to me because it's similar to the quintessential quintuplets and I actually have never seen volume one. Water Dragon's Bride. I heard the artwork is absolutely stunning in that manga as well. 
I was a little bit apprehensive to pick up some older series because I just didn't know how tough it would be to collect the full sets, so I was nervous if I picked up a couple volumes would I be able to get my hands on the others. It was tough because there were a lot that looked very, very interesting, but I didn't want to like just be sitting on half. Now Toriko, they had pretty much every single volume of, and I was very interested in picking up this series. Tomo-chan is a girl. This is another one I wanted to pick up. Unfortunately, I didn't. I have a lot of regrets about not picking up pretty much like every manga in here. Sword Art Online. Superheroes, I think that might have been a little bit lewd since it was fully sealed. Had so much skip beat, pretty much the entire series and the other Viz Bigs as well. Skip and Loafer Volume 2. I am so happy I've been looking for Volume 2 forever. I can actually continue that story. It's the first volume like hooked me instantly. I've been waiting like I think two months now to read the second volume. Sunny Leads seemed like an interesting martial arts style manga. Sorry for my familiar. I haven't seen this manga, but I really loved the artwork on it and it seemed like something that I would like. It said it was like an offbeat adventure type manga, which I love like those quirky kind of stories more than like the straightforward style adventure stories. Yeah, as you can see, some of the manga was really high up. I could not even read it. Samurai Executioner. All of Sankarea. Peach Girl box set. If I'm not mistaken, it was this store or another store I've been to recently that had like multiple Peach Girl box sets, which made me want to pick it up just because I kept seeing it. Short Cake Cake, I'm still looking for volume one of that series. I heard it's really good and it's definitely up my alley. Rebound, now this looked like an interesting sports manga about basketball, but I've never heard of it. I always hear about Slam Dunk and Kuroko's basketball, I think, but I've never heard of Rebound. One that I'm so unbelievably sad about is Psycho Pass. I wanted to collect this series so freaking bad. They had two volume twos, but no volume one. Like literally broke my heart when I saw that. Ragnarok looked very interesting, but unfortunately it was kind of yellowing and not in the best condition. And the only kind of not great thing about this shop was that they sold everything at sticker price, or if it was out of print, they would sell it at a higher cost, which I get, but at the same time, I don't want to like blow all my money on one older manga unless I really have to have it.
They even had Pandora box. It was kind of ripped in the back. The seal was broken, so I wasn't gonna pick it up, but I know a lot of people have been picking that box set up recently because it's just absolutely gorgeous. Peacemaker looks very interesting. Looked like a cool shonen. And honestly, that's pretty much it for this store. I hope that you guys enjoyed looking through it as much as I did because there were so many titles that I have not seen before, but let me show you what I picked up from there. It was very tough, but first on the list is Skip and Loafer. Now, volume one, like I was saying, I absolutely loved it. Hooked me from the beginning. Both characters were great. They played off each other well. The artwork is nice. The storytelling is nice. The character development is nice. Like I cannot say one bad word about this manga. So I am super, super excited to jump into volume two and see what happens next. And I'm pretty sure volume three is out already too. So I can just jump right from two to three. So I'm so, so happy that I added this one to the collection. Next up is No Vampire, No Happy Ending. I picked this up for a couple of reasons. It seemed like it was more of a romantic story. And at the same token, I don't think I have any manga about vampires. So I figured why not add some to the collection? Picked up the first two volumes. And it's about a vampire enthusiast who wants to meet an actual vampire. But when she actually meets a vampire, it's the most incompetent vampire out there. Like on the back, it says he doesn't even know that he's not supposed to eat garlic. So it seems like it could be kind of a silly story about vampires and turn into a romance as well. Yoshi no Zuikata. Now this manga really caught my eye because like I was telling you, I've really been into manga about like arts, arts creation. And this says 32 year old Naruhiko Tono has been scraping by as a manga creator for 10 years. When his latest series gets canceled, he finds himself at a crossroads. Naruhiko's always had his sights set on fantasy, but this time around his editors got another idea, a slice of life story set in a remote village not unlike the one where he was born and raised. So it seems like it's kind of a story about a struggling manga creator that kind of goes back to his roots in a sense, even though he doesn't want to. And I'm assuming that the story's probably gonna do well and he can kind of connect with himself more and the art that he's creating. So yeah, I'm really excited about that one. I also picked up Takane and Hana because I've heard that this story is absolutely great. I picked up the first volume and I know that it's pretty far into the series already, if not completed. So I want to start collecting as much as I can of this because I can't wait to jump into it. I've honestly heard nothing but good things about this series. Next up is So I Can't Play H. Now this one was a little bit more lewd, but the synopsis says, One day, first class Grim Reaper Lasara, for her own reason, secretly enters the human world. After searching in vain for her target, Lasara is completely exhausted. That's when Ryosuke Kaga approaches her. To help Lasara out, he leads her out of the rain into his cozy home where he tells her, I will do anything to help you. When Lasara hears that, she suddenly embraces Ryosuke and dot dot dot. So not really sure what's going to happen. It seems like Ryusuke is getting himself into quite a bit of trouble with an actual Grim Reaper. So I kind of want to see what happens. It seems like it's going to be more of a silly story, but it seemed kind of interesting to me. Now I did pick up My Neighbor Seki because like I said, this story really interested me. It seemed like a nice like comedy slice of life story about a neighbor and the main character and how they kind of form this unlikely relationship. So those stories are just like stuff that I love. The story actually originally came out in 2011, but I think I will be able to collect this. It doesn't seem like it's too, too hard to get. Picked up the first three volumes of Limits. Now, this manga very much interested me because it seemed like a unique take on like cliques in high school and the, I guess, problems that come with them. The synopsis says is, in classrooms across the globe, there are cliques. These circles have set their own rules and standards that they attempt to impose on their peers to varying success. Sometimes these groups go beyond the principles of friendship and scholarship. And in seemingly increasing numbers, some of these groups turn to perversely righteous self-preservation. And it's by an award-winning mangaka. There are six total volumes in this series. So I picked up the first three and if I really like it, I can go back to that store and pick up the next three. Now, last pickup of the day is Toriko. Now, obviously I picked this up for a couple reasons. One, it's a little bit of an older manga and it was sealed in great condition as well. As you can see, it doesn't seem to be any yellowing on the pages. And I really, really wanted to add this to the collection. It's a little bit more expensive than the $10. I think it was 20, but it's okay because I'm just really happy to add this to the collection. And they had a lot of Toriko, so I can always go back and get more once I decide to read this. And yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. It was so much fun for me to go into this store and see what they had. I hope that you enjoyed looking through it. I will see you guys for the next video. I hope you enjoy whatever you are currently reading or picking up. 